DiscerningHearts.com, in cooperation with the Missionary Benedictines of Christ the King Priory, presents The Holy Rule of St. Benedict, A Spiritual Path for Today's World, with Father Mauritius Vildi. Father Mauritius did his philosophical, theological, and doctoral studies in Rome. He is the author of numerous books, including I Want to Understand You, Encountering Foreign Worlds with a Little Prince, The New Image of God's Image, Meister Eckhart on Image and Theology, Peter and Paul, Models of Decision-Making, and On the Way, Benedict's Journey for Spiritual Maturity. Father Mauritius also serves as the prior of Sant'Anselmo in Rome. The Holy Rule of St. Benedict, a spiritual path for today's world, with Father Mauritius Vildi. I'm your host, Chris McGregor. Father Mauritius, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. We have been looking at various aspects of the Holy Rule and how it can be so beneficial in our everyday lives. If there's one area in our life that I think we all struggle with in many ways, it's fear. Fear. And as you have brought forward for this particular episode that we would talk of how the remedy for fear is love. Yes. St. Benedict created or wanted to create and a space to become loving people and to overcome fear. And this you can see again and again in his rule. The monastery is supposed to be a place where God leads us to become loving people. Let me just pick one example from chapter 7, which is on humility. St. Benedict says, Now, therefore, after ascending all these steps of humility, the monk will quickly arrive at that perfect love of God which casts out fear. Through this love, all that he once performed with dread, he will now begin to observe without effort, as though naturally from habit no longer out of fear of hell, but out of love for Christ, good habit and delight in virtue. All this the Lord will by the Holy Spirit graciously manifest in his workmen, now cleansed of vices and sins. So the the journey of a monk starts with both, with a mixture. There's a mixture of love and fear. I remember when I was a novice, I was kind of afraid, would I do everything right? You know, as a novice, you want to do everything right. And so there's a little tension there. Am I right here in this community? And do I do everything right? We have these many customs and little rituals. And so, you know, you want to be a good monk. So there's always a certain fear. And St. Benedict knows that. That's, that's part of this journey. But the goal is, over time, to overcome this fear. So that you live as a monk kind of in a natural way. It's, it's a natural flow. You just do it without being afraid. So to speak, before, when you start out, it is you have duties you have to do this you have to do that later you understand okay this is why i am doing that this is why i'm supposed to do that and then the rule and all these regulations are not hard anymore but help you to enhance your love what saint benedict indicates here he took from the first letter of John. We read in chapter 4, verse 18, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. 
It's interesting that both John the Evangelist and Benedict acknowledge that there is fear. Fear is a part of is part of our lives, is a part of humanity. Fear is natural. We need the fear to survive. For example, if somebody attacks us, it's important to have fear. People who cannot be afraid, they have got a problem. <laughs> Another thing is, you are afraid of things or people who are bigger than you are. Because they have power over you. It's a natural thing that you fear people or things that are greater, bigger, huger than you are. And this is even true for God. So in a way, each of us fears God, at least a little bit, because you never know. He's so big, so great. He has so much power. Actually, he has all the power. What am I compared to him? This can cause a fear. On the other hand, fearing God means acknowledging him. So if I acknowledge, okay, there is somebody who is greater than I am, that brings me into the right connection to him. Even the Old Testament, for example, the book of Sirach, we read, fullness of wisdom is fear of the Lord. So the fear of the Lord is a, it's a very common expression on term in the Old Testament and the New as well. So that's part of our relationship to God. It's, it's, it's this fear. But it is important to mix this fear, so to speak, with love. In a way, the best attitude towards God is not fear in the sense of panic or so, but fear like respect or courtesy. Respect is a little bit different thing. When you when you inject a little bit love into fear, then you you get respect. We have a wonderful example in chapter 66 of the rule of Saint Benedict, which is on the porter of the monastery. As soon as anyone knocks or a poor man calls out. The porter replies, thanks be to God, or your blessing, please. Then, with all the gentleness that comes from the fear of God, he provides a prompt answer with the warmth of love. So here you have both. The porter should respond to this visitor, to this guest, to this poor man, whoever is coming, with fear of God? Interesting. He not only says he should love this, this guy, she, he should have fear of God. Respect. And the warmth of love. Maybe too much love would be overwhelming. I don't know. <laughs> it's important to have both. And finally, they are becoming one. They are not two different emotions anymore or so. They are one. It's fear with love and love with fear. You cannot separate it. They belong together. With love you transform the fear. Another example, chapter 72 of the rule, which is on the good zeal of the monks. To their fellow monks, the brothers show the pure love to God, loving fear. To their abbot, unfeigned and humble love. Let them prefer nothing whatever to Christ, and may he bring us all together to everlasting life. Here again, we have these words, love and fear. So to the brothers and sisters, pure love. To God, loving fear. In a way, we yeah, we, we can love, we can love God purely. I think we can, but there is still, <laughs> because he's the greater, there's still this respect and I guess it has to be there. 
And to the abbot, the brother should show a humble laugh and not a fake laugh, which is also interesting. Father Mauritius, fear often manifests itself in an emotion. It's something that can almost be something that the will cannot control. This love, in some ways, is an act of the will in, in the respect that I'm, go- I'm going to love my neighbor. I'm going to treat him as he should be treated, like Christ. I mean, that's what I've come to learn over our discussions about the rule. So is, there, is that the transformative? It, it, the fear is no longer something that is out of an emotion, out of control? This is, this is very, you put it in, in wonderful words, what I wanted to say too. Both love and fear kind of start on an emotional level. It's an affection. So if you love without any control in a way, you get into problems. And the same is true with fear. If you just go with the fear, it's not good. So both have to be transformed and to be controlled. On the other hand, it is so hard to control that. It's almost impossible. As for fear, I would say, as for myself, the best way to control the fear is to offer it to God and in this way to let it go and to let go control. So when I want to control my fear, oh, it becomes even worse because I know I am weak. you know. And so... I think this is a common um, knowledge that in the Holy Scriptures we find 365 times the word or the phrase, do not be afraid. So this is really a red thread in the Holy Scriptures and in the rule of St. Benedict as well, that God encourages us not to be afraid. And the real reason why we can let go fear is because there is somebody who is greater than we are. You can see how you need the fear in a way. If you don't respect anybody and if you don't respect God, who can help you out of fear? You know. So I think the only way is to acknowledge the fear, not to be afraid of the fear. The bad thing is fear of fear. This is a vicious circle that ends in panic. And so in terms of how can I control my fear in a way I can't, let God control my fear. We'll return in just a moment to The Holy Rule of St. Benedict, a spiritual guide for today's world with Father Mauritius Fildi. Did you know that Discerning Hearts has a free app in which you can find all your favorite Discerning Hearts programming? Father Timothy Gallagher, Dr. Anthony Lillis, Deacon James Keating, Mike Aquilina, Dr. Matthew Bunsen, and so many more are found on the Discerning Hearts free app. Did you also know that you can stream Discerning Hearts programming on numerous streaming platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Spotify, Stitcher, Tune in, and so many more. And did you know that Discerning Hearts also has the YouTube page? Be sure to check out all these different places where you can find Discerning Hearts. Gloria St. Benedict, Sublime Model of Virtue, pure vessel of God's grace. Behold me humbly kneeling at your feet. I implore you in your loving kindness to pray for me before the throne of God. To you I have recourse in the dangers that daily surround me. 
Shield me against my selfishness and my indifference to God and to my neighbor. Inspire me to imitate you in all things. May your blessing be with me always, so that I may see and serve Christ in others and work for his kingdom. Graciously obtain for me from God those favors and graces which I need so much in the trials, miseries, and afflictions of life. Your heart was always full of love, compassion, and mercy toward those who were afflicted or troubled in any way. You never dismissed without consolation and assistance anyone who had recourse to you. I therefore invoke your powerful intercession, confident in the hope that you will hear my prayers and obtain for me the special grace and favor I earnestly implore. Help me, great Saint Benedict, to live and die as a faithful child of God, to run in the sweetness of His loving will, and to attain the eternal happiness of heaven. Amen. Hello, my name is Deacon Omar Gutierrez, and I want to ask you to support Discerning Hearts in a special way. We, Chris McGregor, the board, and I all know that not everyone listening can help financially. We know we have listeners from all parts of the world, and we have made a commitment since the beginning to make the truths shared through Discerning Hearts totally free. So while you may not be able to contribute financially, what you can do is certainly pray, but also give us positive reviews on whatever platform you use to listen to us. If it's iTunes, Android, Stitcher, or Spotify, however it is that you get these podcasts, or if you're on YouTube and you like our videos, please give us a good rating and write a review. The more good ratings and reviews we get, the higher our profile, and the more listeners will discover us, listeners who may have the means to contribute in the future. Please consider rating us and writing a positive review today. We now return to The Holy Rule of St. Benedict, a spiritual guide for today's world with Father Mauritius Fildi. Yeah, it's interesting with fear. We learn to be afraid of fire because we've poked, a flame and it hurts and often in our relationships with others sometimes because of encounters and because of wounds from childhood or whatever it causes us to behave in certain ways doesn't it out of fear absolutely many times when we feel fear it is not because of what we just see or experience it goes back, as you said, to experiences from our past, from childhood, from our youth. Sometimes not even, it's not even coming from what we ourselves have experienced, but maybe what our father or mother have experienced. This even, this fear even is handed on sometimes from one generation to the next. And so for this, it seems to me be important to step back a little bit and to see, okay, where is this fear coming from? Create a little distance and look at this fear so that you are not overwhelmed. And then you can say, okay, okay, that, that must be an old thing. And as you said, the, the occasion when we experience this kind of things the most is in our day-to-day -day, day -day lives with our partners, with our brothers and sisters, with our family members, with our co-workers. These are the situations. And if they, if they find the button, <laughs> then it just happens. And then you react, react in a way that is not appropriate to this situation. What helps then is that you express yourself to this person. That you say, I must tell you, I'm really afraid when you say that or when you do that or I hate when you do that. So express your emotion and show to the other, to your partner, to, to your friend, show him, show her that this is a, this is a vulnerable point. Again, this would mean to acknowledge your fear. And then you make it a little bit more handable. Or that, that, uh, if, if you have to do with a loving person, he will try to avoid this 
in the past, but in, in the future, but maybe he cannot. Sometimes you cannot avoid it. <laughs> Sometimes it's just that we kind of evoke those situations. <laughs> we are looking for them in a way, and they repeat and repeat. This is all stored in our brain. You know, this is how our brain is wired. And we can only reprogram our brain in this regard by by learning how to do it in a new way. And again, to get out of it, the best thing is to share it with the person who, that is concerned. And to have this courage, you know, courage overcomes fear as well. To have the courage to say, I am afraid. The worst people are those who do not know that they are afraid. They are very aggressive. They can be very brutal, extremely brutal. So the Nazis in, the, in, in, in former Germany, these were people who were not aware of their own fear. And they became brutal and aggressive. Mm. Now, the remedy to this Leviathan of fear is something much greater. As you said in the first letter of John, the, the greater is God. God is love. And so how do we again incorporate that? In the, in, in the beginning you had talked about humility, that little the awareness of who we are, but also that being little and obedient. Right. I think it's about learning to trust. And for this we have got time, plenty of time. The idea of monastic life is you you profess for your whole life, finally. And the idea is you will need it <laughs> to become a loving person. I guess the same is true for, for a marriage as well. So the reason why you want to stick together for forever, or let's better say f as long as you live on this earth, um, it is because you know it will take a long time, a lot of time, to grow into this love and, to, and into this trust and to transform this fear. It just need, takes time. You have to work on it, though, but um, time heals wounds, too. And this is what St. Benedict said in this chapter on humility, that over time you will transform in the, into this perfect love. You cannot expect that this is there from the very beginning. Eventually you need both. You need love and fear. As I said, fear is also very helpful. Think about, we just talked about marriage. In the Catholic wedding vows, one formula says, I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. I found this always interesting. Why is it not only I will love you, there's this and I will honor you. And this honor includes this respect. There is something greater in you, something from God that I have to respect and to honor, something that is greater than I am. I cannot only love it. Sometimes it might frighten me, because you are so different. But I need you as the one who is so different for my salvation. So again, to embrace this fear. That's true in community and communion. I mean, is that, do you think, why our Lord brought us together for communion in even its broadest sense. Yes. Communion creates closeness. And love, the loving person wants to be close to the one who loves, whom he loves. So, but again, love without fear is not stable. And fear without love is inhuman. It's not human. But St. Benedict is clear that at the end of the day, at the end of our life, and even before, that the goal is to grow into a love. Or as St. John said, cast out the fear. 
I'm recalling uh, conversations we've had in the past about someone who wasn't Benedictine, but someone you held in high regard, St. Catherine of Siena, and how that great love she had for the Lord, she could do nothing but go against, and she had the courage to go against her fear of encounter, you know, outside the enclosure to to be Christ and to love even those she knew would hurt her. I think we cannot overcome fear with fear, but with love. This is true also for um, an educational context or even if you think about your own children. When you are afraid of where they are going and heading to, you won't help them. (laughs) The best thing you can do is to love them. To love them. Because this love shows the trust and will help them to become more loving and trustful people. If they see your fear, they will be afraid because you are the bigger one, you know. So in other words, if God loves us dearly and he is not afraid that our life will finally go wrong. Okay, he knows he has he gave us the freedom to choose and we have a choice, but finally he is he trusts and he is confident that we will come to him and that we will find the right way to him. Any final thoughts on this particular aspect of the holy rule? There is a recommendation that St. Benedict gives to the abbot. He says in chapter 64, Let the abbot strive to be loved rather than feared. I think this is what God does as well, and Christ did. Christ never, Jesus never wanted to threaten us. In contrary, he he conveyed and he talked about God's love to us, and that we are children of God. That was his main message. He never wanted, wanted to threaten us. And as a last thought, I would like to share with you an experience that I had in my life. It's not too many years ago that I got an appendicitis. So I had a ruptured appendix, but I didn't know about it. So I had terrible pain, and my primary physician, he didn't see it. He didn't realize it. And I suffered. Oh, it was incredible how I suffered. But finally, it was a brother, monk, brother of mine, who said, now we are going to the hospital. And actually, I'm without him, brother Abraham. Abraham, I wouldn't be here probably. So he said, now we go. You know, at that point, I didn't have enough fear, actually, <laughs> in a way. Anyway, so he took me to the hospital. They did the surgery right away. And... Everything went well. But after that, I had to stay two weeks or so. It was really serious in the hospital. The surgeon had told me 30 minutes later I would have died. It was really close. And so I was I was there in, in the hospital and I was not very well feeling. And all of a sudden... I was, I got such a panic. I was so afraid. It was a fear of death. The funny thing was, I was not really at risk anymore. So I called my brother, who is a physician. He said, don't worry. You are safe now. There is nothing to be afraid of. You are safe. But my my fear was horrible. I was just, it, I was pure fear. This is how, I, how it felt. And then I tried to pray, and it didn't work. I couldn't pray. That was horrible, too. And then finally I looked at the crucifix, which was on the wall, and I felt kind of ashamed. I thought, now you have been in the monastery for such a long time, you are a monk, you are a priest, and you are still are so afraid of death and so afraid to die. I was really ashamed because I thought, I must have done any, something wrong. 
um, that I cannot trust more. <laughs> you know, what, what, what? Where's this fear coming from? And and then I heard the Lord saying, He said, "No, oh, don't worry. It was much too early, way too early for you to die. So your fear is is just right. You know, maybe in decades or so, I don't know. Then." I'm so full of love that I'm not afraid anymore to die. But at that time, it was okay that you that you are afraid. It is okay. And the way how he said that was so loving. So I will never forget that. Mm. Perfect love casts out fear. Right. <laughs> mm. Thank you so much, Father Mauritius. You're welcome. You've been listening to The Holy Rule of St. Benedict a spiritual path for today's world with Father Mauritius Vilde. To hear and or to download this conversation, along with hundreds of other spiritual formation programs, visit discerninghearts.com. You can also hear it on the free Discerning Hearts app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. This has been a production of Discerning Hearts. I'm your host, Chris McGregor. We hope that if this has been helpful for you, that you will first pray for our mission. And if you feel us worthy, consider a charitable donation, which is fully tax deductible to help support our efforts. But most of all, we hope that you will tell a friend about discerninghearts.com and join us next time for The Holy Rule of St. Benedict, a spiritual path for today's world with Father Mauritius Fildee.